Jennifer Roman here for CC Arts and today we are going to be making a salt and watercolor abstract painting. And here is my first sample done for you. You can see it's sort of a mandala design. And I just did that with a variety of rainbow color watercolor paints. I have that on a baker's rack just to kind of help the drying process, but you can just do it on a tray or on your table with some paper underneath. Whatever you have at home is fine. I do recommend covering your table just to be on the safe side. I have a drop cloth here. You could use a cut open trash bag or some newspapers or a combination. Again, whatever you have at home that you're comfortable using is fine for this. There are no hard and fast rules. I am also using Morton's iodized salt. This is your typical table salt. It's a fine grain and any fine grain table salt will be fine for this. I have Elmer's school glue and again any basic white glue will be fine. And in my sample I used this Crayola brand watercolor tray. Any brand will do. I also used this off-brand tray to give myself a few more colors and today I will show you an experiment using watercolors I mean I'm sorry using food coloring and this one is the yellow it looks a little orange in the container I did two drops of each I'm actually going to add an extra drop in the yellow matter of fact I think I'll add an extra drop in each one so that's three drops of food coloring and I put a couple tablespoons I would guess of water in these containers and these are just empty spice containers that I had around the house. Uh, this one was from like a, jo a jelly sample that came in like one of those uh, gift baskets that you sometimes get. This was a spice jar. That was a condiment sample that came in takeout. So, and I'm going to make a purple. We'll see how it goes. Since I did do three drops in each one, I'll do... I'll do two of each color to start with. So two drops of red, two drops of blue, and then I'll also make it an orange, two drops of yellow, and two drops of red. My red was spilling, so I, why waste? I just added that in there. All right, and I'm just swirling these to mix. When we get ready to paint later, I can mix them a little bit additionally with my brush. I'm going to move those out of the way. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to paint with the glue. Now, we're not going to use a brush. We're going to squeeze it directly out of the glue bottle. And here's Oliver's down here. Inevitably, if I'm working, he wants that's when he wants his pettings. So you might see him pop his head up in a second. I'm just going to make sure that my glue is open. It looks like there he is. Hi, hi, bud. Hello. All right, so I am going to do a spiral pattern. I'm not going to touch the nozzle of the glue to the paper. I'm just going to squeeze it. This is a larger bottle, so I'm squeezing with both hands and slowly create my pattern. I want to move the bottle slowly so I don't get any breaks in my glue design. my bottle i have no i did notice this making the samples that my bottle is difficult to squeeze so i hope that you have better results perhaps with a smaller size bottle if you have an empty squeeze bottle you could also try and move it into the empty bottle sorry I was concentrating on my squeezing and this looks like it's going to be much easier to work with so I'm just going to continue my spiral design you can see it goes much faster and I think I'm going to close this spiral off and then add some rays, kind of like sun rays, just to for a little more interest. All 
Now, once your design is finished, and I will show you that step next, you're going to want to add your salt and then shake it off. And then you're going to want to let your glue dry completely. And that is actually why I originally did use the Baker's cooling rack, which are the type of racks you would use to cool cookies on after you baked cookies. So if my trusty assistant could move the finished work off of that rack, I'm going to put this glue design on the rack to dry and we'll switch to my dry design. Okay, so I have my design. Now I'm going to shake my salt and I am reusing salt from the previous shaking, but it, as I said before, it is the Morton's lights, the Morton's iodized salt. And I'm just trying to get full coverage over all of my glue. I'm trying not to pour too much out at once. but I'm probably going to shake this off, shake the excess back into my cup, yep, and then come back again and get the areas that I didn't get. Since I have a lot of glue over here and salt, a lot of salt coverage over here and none there, I'm gonna shake it in that direction. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. And now I'm going to take this paper, I'm going to do a swap. I'm actually going to put it back into the glass cup. You could just shake it directly onto your design again, but I wanted you to be able to see better. I feel like that's a pretty good coverage, but I'm going to go ahead and just get the areas that I see a little bit of shininess from the glue still showing just to really ensure a nice, even coverage. And it did look like it was mostly just some of the corners, some of the rays. So now I am going to shake off again. You do not want to let the excess salt remain on your paper while the glue is drying or the, it will expand and you won't see your design as clearly shake it towards you so you can see that there is my glue with salt design now I'm going to move this out of the way and switch over to my dry design and I let this dry for about 24 hours I let it dry overnight now I am going to just double check Give it a tap very little salt came off so that's good and again you can use watercolor paints or you can use food coloring so let's see how my food coloring looks if it's too light we can just add an extra drop or two so i'm going to dry my brush since i am dipping it directly into a liquid and i'm just going to dip it and then just lightly touch the brush to the salt and th that looks like pretty good saturation so this was I believe four drops of yellow and it's pretty heavily saturated it almost looks orange so to show you a contrast oh, oops that's not water to show you the contrast let's dip it in the orange and the orange was two drops of yellow and two drops of red. It is a little bit brighter orange. I may also have had more water in the container with the orange. So what's cool to note is that this is entirely food coloring, not watercolor. So that's a pretty uh, decent amount of coverage, I would say, from your food, the food coloring.
Now I'm going to use some red. So this, des this first design I'm coloring is kind of the warm family of colors. And you can do color families. You can do a painting with all warm or all cool paint colors. You could do rainbow colors. You could do all primary or all secondary colors. Or you could do random whatever your heart delights in. There's really no right or wrong with how we do this. It's also kind of fun to do colors that will blend in with each other. So I'm going to start with a green. And then I'm going to add blue around that loop-de-loop. -loop. Let's let some of the green and blue overlap there. And now as we get closer to this next loop-de-loop, -loop, I'm going to go into the purple. Which really looks pretty blue to me. So maybe we should add some more red and see what happens. So I added three drops. So now it's two drops of blue and five drops of red. Let's see if this is more, but now it looks brown. So it could just be that the food coloring. Yeah, that looks, if you look super close, eh, it looks brown to me. So not a great result with mixing the red and the blue to make purple, but a cool result if you want brown all right, friends, I'm going to stop talking so I can fast forward this section of the video and I'll come back to you when I'm closer to finished. No. All right, friends, so that is our multicolored abstract salt and watercolor or salt and food coloring painting. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did and you make a wonderful work of art, please share it in the comments. We'd love to see what you did. Thanks. Bye-bye.